Let's talk about the contract of Rasheed Rice still not being signed, teams inquiring about trading for Daniil Hunter, with many hoping the Chiefs are one of those teams, and then look a bit more in depth at the Chiefs receiving room to process through who at the moment seems most likely to make the roster. But first, how about those? All right, by May 19th or so, every draft pick the Chiefs selected had signed their rookie deals, all except one player, and that is wide receiver Rasheed Rice. And there's potentially a variety of reasons why this hasn't happened yet, but John Dixon of Arrowhead Pride said that, quote, the delay in getting Rice's contract done is very likely because his agent is waiting to see what kinds of concessions other second round players have been able to get. Once Rice and his agent have a better idea of the deal they can easily make, they can move on to negotiating the final details. and then he points out why Chiefs fans don't need to be worried about this, saying, in the meantime, Rice is not holding out. He's been on the field for every practice the media has been allowed to see. While there may be some details he and his agent need to work out, it appears to be a foregone conclusion that he will sign his contract. Therefore, have no fear because this will more than likely get done here in the very near future. And then it was announced today that Bill's QB Josh Allen is going to be on the Madden 24 cover. And honestly, I am happy for the guy. The Deluxe Editions cover is definitely the better of the two. Um, and while I think maybe Jalen Hurts, Justin Jefferson, or Joe Burrow, maybe even the Kelsey brothers, I mean, that would have been absolutely fire, but any of these others would have made more sense. I saw somewhere that Josh Allen could very well have been the plan for last year's cover, but because of the death of John Madden, they pushed it back a year to put Madden on the cover of Madden 23, and therefore, Madden 24 is Allen's year. Either way, though, Allen is a great QB, top five in the league for sure. I mean, depending on who you ask, and he is stoked to be on there tweeting out today that it is a childhood dream come true. He's also the first Buffalo Bill, I believe, to be featured on the cover. But the best part of all this to me, when the cover got announced, uh, was this clip from Mahomes sidearm slinging it straight to Kelsey for a touchdown. And while Mahomes wouldn't just randomly fall over and sidearm sling it like that as he did in this game trailer, it still got me pumped up just like an iced coffee from my own HBTC blend of Benchwarmer Brew, a smooth medium roast with origins of Ethiopia and Mexico, and flavor notes of citrus and chocolate. This is a great tasting coffee that in turn directly supports the channel. And you can also save 25% by signing up for a monthly subscription if that's something you'd be interested in by going to coffee.hbtchiefs.com. All right, next up, it was reported today by Ian Rappaport that the Vikings and Daniil Hunter have not been able to come together and strike a long-term deal to accommodate him at the level he wants. And because of that, the Vikings have reportedly been fielding calls from some potentially very interested teams about the edge rusher who is on the last year of his deal. It seems like they want to keep him, but Hunter may be wanting more than the Vikings are willing to offer. Anyway, because of this report, many are speculating which teams have been calling to inquire about Daniil, with some around Chiefs Kingdom hoping and possibly praying that it is Brett Veach. Adam Best of Arrowhead Addict said Brett Veach should blow up the Vikings' phones, adding Daniil Hunter and his $5.5 million cap hit seems much more plausible than accommodating the DeAndre Hopkins cash grab. Chiefs would have an elite defense. And honestly, Honestly, I can see where he's going here. Definitely less expensive than DeAndre Hopkins. And why not just stack up the Chiefs defense with as much talent as humanly possible? Just keep every edge rusher fresh, rotating in, moving inside, outside with the Minihue, Dana, Felix, George. I mean, the list goes on. Then, of course, you have Chris Jones. But not only that, you have Tyler Forness of Vikings Wire. So he covers the Vikings for a living. List six potential teams today that could trade for Hunter, with one of them being the Chiefs. He said that Hunter would be a difference maker that Spag's defense loves to have in his aggressive scheme. It would also take the pressure off Chris Jones and replace Frank Clark with a better version of him. Well, more on Frank Clark in a moment. But even though Hunter suffered a neck injury in 2020 that required season-ending surgery in a torn pectoral in 2021, he had a great 2022 season recording 10 and a half sacks and earning a third trip to the Pro Bowl. So the question is, would Brett Veach be willing to give up draft capital, most likely a second round pick at least, and take on Hunter's salary and also more than likely be willing to give him an extension of sorts on top of that? Seth Kaiser said, you could probably get Hunter for not too expensive right now if you're a team who would benefit from a good edge rusher, but that's the thing. But cash slash cap, etc. Meaning, 
It all comes down to the money, as it always does. Therefore, because of that, I'm not sure how likely Veach will be wanting to trade for the 28-year-old and Daniil Hunter that's potentially wanting out because he wants a lot of money, even though it would be fun for this year and would indeed level up the Chiefs' D-line. I honestly think it's more likely the Chiefs opt to bring in a veteran pass rusher that's a free agent because you wouldn't have to give up any draft capital. It could be a one-year deal cheaper as well. And while they probably wouldn't be as talented as Hunter, there are still some guys out there that could help move the needle as a rotational piece on the line without breaking the bank, such as Yannick Ngakwe, Jadavian Clowney, Dwayne Smoot, Justin Houston, sound familiar? Carlos Dunlap, sound familiar as well? Or how about Frank Clark? I realize that Daniil is the better player, but Clark has already reportedly expressed interest at wanting to return, which I shared about uh, a week or so ago, but a source close to the situation recently said that the belief is that Frank Clark will be in KC this year, and that source is very close with Frank Clark to say the least. So hey, Daniil Hunter sounds awesome, but someone like Frank or maybe Carlos Dunlap seems a bit more realistic, all things considered, but what do you guys think? Veteran pass rusher for cheaper and more than likely on a one-year deal, or maybe somebody like Daniil Hunter who's looking for another longer-term deal to build around, even though the Chiefs already have a minihue, among others. Let me know in the comments down below. Would love to hear your thoughts on that. And then Peter Schrager recently listed his top five breakout wide receivers for 2023, with those five being Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Drake London, Tyquan Thornton, and finally Justin Ross. Ross has been a hot topic all around, basically, especially Chiefs Kingdom since being signed last year, with the hype sadly fading for the season when he was placed on IR after another foot surgery last summer. But the hype train is definitely back in full effect, as we all know. And at this moment, the question is, can Ross do what it takes to make the roster? Many say yes, definitely. Meanwhile, some are confused about my recent way too early 53-man roster projection that did not include Justin Ross making it. And here's some more thoughts. I shared on my live stream last night about why he wasn't yet on my 53-man roster. Please tell me why you don't think either Ross will make the roster. I'm not saying that they can't fight their way onto the roster. I'm saying right now as things stand, I have the Chiefs rolling with six wide receivers and that being Kadarius Tony, MVS, Sky Moore, Rasheed Rice, Richie James, and Justin Watson. Richie James, I could kind of talk him up all day. You know, he's coming off a career year, 600 yards with Daniel Jones, kick return, punt return. Where I will be a little bit more curious about him is if Daenerys Prince seems to be getting the nod for kick returns. Like, okay, maybe Richie James is the punt returner. I don't know. But with Pacheco and Kadarius Tony getting an increased role in the offense, they're probably not returning kickoffs and punts anymore. You want to preserve Kadarius Tony is in his health anyway. So Justin Watson, they liked him enough to sign a two-year deal with him. It's easier to get out of his contract next year rather than this year if you look at how it's set up. But either way, it's not like an enormous loss. If they cut Richie, I think it's like 500,000 dead cap. And I think Justin Watson's dead cap would be like just over a million dollars. So I'm not saying either of them can't find their way off the roster by the time cut downs happen. But as of right now, that's how I see the six. Justin Ross would be right there in line fighting. If they want to roll with seven wide receivers for some reason, they have not. I don't know if they've ever done that. If they have, it's been a long time. And I'm talking about how they've crafted their initial 53 on cut down day. Um, if they want to do that, cool. But three of the last four years, they've gone with five receivers. One year, they did go six. But if they want to roll, since they don't have a fullback, if they want to roll with three running backs and go with seven wide receivers or something or one less O-lineman, Justin Ross, in my opinion, would be wide receiver seven right now. We just need to see how things go. Uh, mini camp, training camp, preseason. And you'll be able to read like the signs because remember how many people were wanting Josh Gordon to make the roster last season and I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news but I was like guys at training camp he's working with the threes he's working with the twos during preseason games he's not getting any reps with the ones he's catching passes from I don't even remember who the quarterbacks were at that time it was uh guys that didn't make the roster so that's when I was like I'm sad to report Josh Gordon has an uphill battle to fight and he more than likely won't make this roster like people were going crazy thinking I hated him because he smoked weed I mean I don't even know what some people's issue was, but he didn't make the roster, okay? So I felt like sometimes it's worth explaining in a bit of detail why my mind is the way it is. It's not because I'm not rooting for Justin Ross, John Ross, like, dude, I'm rooting for him. But right now, that's how I see it, and uh, it could definitely change. The initial 53-man roster projection is not, um, this is exactly how it's gonna be. It was my best guess as of June 3rd, or whenever I made it, and there's still a lot of time left 
and a lot can change. So with all that being said, time will certainly tell for Ross, and if the Chiefs don't opt to keep seven receivers, which I looked back 10 years, they've never done it, they also haven't had a fullback, I realize, but that means in order for Justin Ross to make it, they either go with seven, somebody's either gotta get injured, or he straight up has to take another grown man's job like Pacheco did last year, and as I said earlier, it could be either Justin Watson or Richie James as neither have huge losses attached to them with their current contracts, although I do think Justin Watson is the most safe of him or Richie due to the structure of his two-year deal, but at the same time, you at least know what you are getting with Justin Watson or Richie James, who have both shown they can produce at the NFL level. Justin Watson, yeah, he didn't do a whole ton as far as stats are concerned, but he had almost the most routes run of any receiver on the Chiefs team last season, and some just say, well, that's because others were getting injured and they were just throwing Justin Watson in there as a filler, but he did earn the trust of Mahomes. He's fast. He's shown that he can kind of plug and play anywhere in Kansas City and has another season under his belt. On the flip side, though, if the Chiefs do not end up keeping Justin Ross on their 53-man roster, he will more than likely get snatched up by another team because the potential ceiling with him is a good one. So at the end of the day, the Chiefs may need to take a calculated risk on either betting on the potential ceiling of Ross at the cost of Richie James or Justin Watson, or opt with the veterans, maybe play it a little safer, but always be left wondering what if about Justin Ross as they watch him go to another team. It's certainly going to be one of the most intriguing position battles to watch out for over the next couple of months, but be sure of this. I will definitely keep you all updated and in the know every step of the way. So until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?